Hello and welcome or welcome back to talking about cross stitch with the stitching owl. I'm so glad you could join me today. It is so hard to believe that July is finished. Our Olympics have come and gone and here we are halfway through August. My friends in the United States already have their children starting back to school while here in Canada, we have a couple more weeks before they need to go back. Our summer is rushing by. It has been a lovely summer for me. My July was full of stitching. Uh, I know a number of you had commented how, how on earth do you get that much done? Well, July was 100% about stitching and family. That was what my focus was. Oh, and walking. Um, once we reach August though, it gets a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to tell you that today I have not just got no generalized notes, I've got nothing. I am going to go forward and show you everything I can and I'm not sure how long this is going to take. I am indeed in the midst of my marking. I have completely marked 53 hour exams and I've got another hundred to go. Now I am truly fortunate to have wonderful incentive. Amy of Renewing Stitches has said, so when you get done your marking, we shall have a Zoom and we will pick out a pattern from Yasmin with Love and start that. And we have had the plan of starting one of Yasmin's pattern for a while. We just didn't have the perfect time to do it. And Amy, you are right. I'm looking forward to it. And of course, looking forward to another Zoom with you. Right now, I'll be going gently on my Zoom time as I try and stay focused on my marking. I am using my stitching to relieve the stress that can come with having wonderful people trying to do their best on three hour exams who are so used to typing that really their pencil skills are not once they want, they just aren't like what they used to be. Uh, precision with pencils is hard now. So let's take a moment. I want to say thank you to everybody who hopped on and commented in my last video it was so special for me to be celebrating everything. It was almost a celebrate-a-thon and have everyone join in and just be so happy for me. So I want to say thank you. I am pleased a number of you have noticed that I'm over 900 subscribers and on the way to a thousand. And yes, that will be a special day that we will mark as well. My send a smiles are alive and well. I have one more ready to go out tomorrow. I'm not going to say who because I would like it to be a surprise. Um, and I will continue to aim to have one send a smile go out each one at the time I have a video. Now, if we just start generalized and say, let's go back to the normal course of events where I start with fully finished items. So about a week ago, yes, there was World Day of Cross Stitch. And I was truly blessed to be able to spend a number of hours on Zooms with my many friends. It was ahead of my getting my exams to mark, so I was free as a bird. And while I was doing the Zooms, with Amy Renewing Stitches, Laura Stitching by the Shore. Oh, there were so many other um, floss tubers that were joining us. We had Kim Contented Needleworker. We had Joanne the Eclectic Stitcher. We had Andrew the Running Stitcher. And hang on, rows of Untwist Your Stitches. I think it's the first time I've had the pleasure of being able to get to know her in person. So um, if I forgot to mention you, I do apologize. 
There was so many lovely moments. And as usual, I readied myself to do some fully finished items while I was there. I personally find that it is a little bit tricky for me to count while I'm chatting. So it either needs to be fill in or uh, fully finishing. So what I did was I took a number of the small pieces that I did for my prompts for Naptime Stitchers Stitch the Summer Olympics 2024 and I made them into ornaments. So I actually have six completed ornaments. So if I start with my Darlene Dion Celebrate Canada Day. So this is Canada Day bouquet. So you can see that I finished it with beads that were in red and white to keep it like the flag. I did bead the center of the flowers in a variety of colors. And my back is simply a textured back. I do like to have my tone on tones for my backings. So that was finish number one. And I will say that Darlene has been giving some peeks at other things that she's been up to lately. I hope you will give her um, Etsy shop a peek and she does floss tube videos as well. Now, uh, Brenda the Handwork Maniac got me on to the Jardin Privé Olympic Gnomes. And I was thrilled to have Lisa, the Forest City Stitcher, um, join me on this. Now, everybody else seems to be doing the overall picture, whereas I separated out my gnomes. We saw a couple of gnomes becoming uh, ATC cards in uh, Stitching by the Shores ATC Challenge for summer. I'm happy to say that we have the new prompt of something with wings and wow, there's so many options. As I was talking to my husband, we were having fun in the car as we drove to my mother and we were like, well, you know, we often say, well, if pigs could fly, so you could do a pig and put wings on it and you could do a clock with wings. And then we got going, hmm, if I did a Red Bull, would people know that that was the Red Bull advertisements where they say Red Bull gives you wings. So Laura, you've really got my mind going. So if we look at my fully finished of uh, some of my Olympic gnomes, this is the boxing gnome. This is weightlifting gnome. Now you notice that I didn't do completely beads all the way around. There are times I feel it's appropriate and I do it every time I can, but there are other times that I think, ah, uh, it's a little bit too much for what the content is in the stitch. This is Hurdles Gnome. I love that little sheep. And this is Swimming Gnome. Cute little ladybug there, duck and butterfly. Technically speaking, this would work for something with wings because we have three things with wings on this particular one. But this is not an ATC card. And then the last um, small that I finished into an ornament was my tiny town church, where I just wanted to show everyone that those tiny towns are extremely versatile it doesn't take long to just pick out your favorite building, add a bead or a button, because I beaded the stained glass windows and I put buttons down here for the flowers. And again, I just had a generic background, colorful to match the stained glass windows. So there we go. There are my six fully finished items. And now when we go on to finished items, I have had a visit from my daughter and she brought some finished items. So 
This is Halloween Terrarium by the Tiny Modernist. Is that not adorable? I love, it's like a snowman stack, but with pumpkins. And then under the ground, she's got the skeleton who would have been buried. Cute little owl up here. And of course the bats and the ghosts. And the ghosts, I like that they are slightly visible. Not super visible, just a little bit there. Cause that after all is what ghosts are. So I think my daughter did a really good job of that. So that was the first one she showed me. Um, another tiny modernist is this black cat small. My daughter does love her cat. She sometimes refers to herself as a crazy cat lady. The little crest is a heart. Nice long stitches for the whiskers. So this one did not take her long at all. Now, I saw her twice in the last week. The first time I saw her, I kitted up a whole bunch of things. And in one week alone, she got one of them finished. So this is a Maria Bravko pattern. Um, she has something called a witch sampler that again, I took different pieces out of. And here we have her hand with ivy. It's, it doesn't have an awful lot of colors, it, but it does have just enough to give that hand shading. My daughter, um, she has her moments where she's not happy with doing a lot of backstitching, but on this one she said, when I finished the X's, I thought, oh dear, this isn't gonna really show very well. But she had faith and she jumped in with the backstitch and she loves it now. So that is Cute Patterns by Maria. And there is even one more, and it is another tiny modernist finish. And it actually is her biggest project to date. And it is, of course, more cats. So I'll just come in. So tiny modernist with these items. Yes, it's busy, but you can see that the cats don't have a lot of different colors in them. They are very doable so that if she, like she was busy studying for statistics. And I don't know about you, but in university that was not most people's favorite credit because it wasn't as exciting as others. So she was using this piece to de-stress and it worked. She earned an 84 in that class and so we are super proud of her. I want to do a special frame of that and I'm hoping that she will actually keep that one uh, while she may be uh, giving some of the other ones away. And I know you're thinking, but Karen, you give everything away. I know. I am going to keep the occasional thing. Now, uh, there were still two more finishes. Yes, but they were mine. In Praise of Pollinators is complete. So I'm just going to come up close. Oh, and you know what I just realized? I forgot to do the back stitching on the bat. So it's 99% complete. I need to get that bat back stitched. Um, but you can see all of the colors. Bees, little bird in there. Got a mouse here. I remembered to get my ladybug in. I am thrilled with this. 
And I must admit that I would love to live a little bit closer to Kim and have her cut up a frame for me because I have a lot of frames in this house, but none of them are quite the right size. So that was one of my finishes. And yes, it was finished for a prompt in the uh, Stitch the Olympics where it said to um, stitch on something close to a finish. <coughs> so that day, excuse me, um, I actually stitched on two things that were close to a finish. And I got my Dragon Keeping Time. This is a Maria Bravko. Oh, I forgot to say my pollinators was a blue flower. Okay. So this one has a variety, like some of the back stitches two. I used two uh, strands of black for around the dragon, one strand around the the gold here, and then in here there are other colors of back stitching. Just you can't really see it on here. There's a little bit there, but there there is a sense of dimension with uh, the sand going through the hourglass. So I am really pleased with that, and I'm going to take um, a photo of it and send it off to Erica and Samantha for Year of the Dragon Sal. So I actually finished my dragon and I love it. So this was uh, uh, stitched on 32 count uh, Rumbling Thunder by Pell Stitches. It took half of my fat quarter, so I'm delighted I still have another piece of this size that I can use for another. And if I just revisit my In Praise of Pollinators, put it up on here. So this is 20 count Ada cloth. It's uh, the color Parchment by Fiber on a Whip. And I am using DMC with the occasional Roxy floss in here uh, was used just to bring out a few of the colors a little bit differently than everybody else. When I talk about my daughter stitching, I am purchasing 14 count Ada for her and having fun. They now make 14 count Ada in so many delightful colors. We are not going to run out of ideas for a backing for her, well, background for her. Okay, so there was my finishes. So now we are going to go to whips, which are works in progress. And let's see if I can actually not miss anything. When I go through this after, if I've missed something, there might be suddenly a mini video inserted. Yes, this is just me off the cuff. So one of these stitches that I'm doing with my friend Connie, and I do hope to be able to like zoom with Connie soon just to get to know her in some way other than uh, just a few words on Instagram and things. Um, so this is the Peacock Pincushion by Country Cottage, Cottage Garden Samplings. All of us get that mixed up. And we did see this the last time. I have gotten it further. I wanted to get that wing in. This is a 22 count hard hanger in an off-white. Oops, sorry. And I just wanted to make it so that, like this is still going to be a good sized pin cushion. If I did it on 14 or 16 count, it was going to be bigger than I thought that I wanted. So these colors are one strand of DMC and they are close to the called for colors. I did not purge skeins from 
other projects, even though I knew I had them, I find that I was starting to get mixed up in my owl because I was grabbing things and forgetting to put it back. So I used um, Threadbare DMC to DMC conversion. It's a lovely site that you can just type in a number and it'll tell you like five or six other colors that are close and it shows you the shading so that you can compare it to the original color and figure out which one will go best in the scene that you're making at the time. So these, this will look pretty much as like this, but it won't necessarily, well, no, it isn't. Almost all of the threads are different than it says. I got a bit more done on my Annie B's 12 Days of Christmas stockings. I admit that this one took a little bit of a hit during the Olympics and will potentially not get a huge amount of time while I am doing my marking and then I will dive into it. But I did get started on five golden rings. I was waiting for a dental procedure for my youngest and I find this book is perfect for taking along and there's going to be a root canal for me to wait through this coming week. I'm so glad we've got a good dentist. Um, it can be tricky finding somebody who works with the autistic patiently and we found the correct dental studio and dentist, so I'm thrilled. So I have some berries to put in here, some leaves to put in here, and then all of the beading to go to finish that. So as I mentioned last time, I think um, I will pick one of the colors, not necessarily the red. I'm taking the red to the dental studio because I'm using their lighting to stitch and it is 28 count, which means it's the easiest for me to see when I don't have my LED light right over my shoulder. Because I put my LED light over my shoulder so that it shines right on my lap and then I can actually see to do my 35 and actually even smaller. I can do 28 and 32 one over one with it. So that was my Annie B's 12 days of Christmas stockings. This is of course a sal that I am doing with Dottie the Stitching Scotty and Annie the proper stitcher. The bougie stitchers have quite a few stockings already stitched. So it has been a lot of fun and it will provide us with a lot of fun. I do suspect that there will be stitching of this during 2025 as well because I don't know that we'll all get all 12 days done for all the projects that we want this year. And another work in progress. I purchased the Halloween for the love of cross stitch. No, just cross stitch. I, I do collect the Halloween and Christmas magazines. At some point, you know I'm going to do this owl. Absolutely. But what I wanted to do was just something to jumpstart my Halloween. And I noticed that there was a black cat sampler in here. And I looked at that and said, oh, I think I'm going to take out this cat and that cat and make smalls. So this black cat sampler is by Faith Works Designs. And I have, literally it only took three colors
So these two are DMC and this is Roxy Flosco, excuse me. Sorry about puppy dog watching out the window. So I will make that into an ornament soon. Now, at the beginning of this year, I said that 2024, I wanted to be able to make 24 ornaments by 24 different designers. I knew I would definitely get 24 ornaments done. They, that's been done long ago. But by different designers, I now have 18 different designers in my ornaments of 2024 and I'm well on the way to finishing that off. So Faithworks Designs was uh, number 18 and Pigeon Coop Designs was number 17. And of course, I've had Darling and Whimsy, Darlene Dion, Tiny Modernist, Doreen Jones, Twin Peaks Primitives, Lindy Stitches, to just name a few. So I have really enjoyed getting to know different designers and I know the easiest thing to do would be just to take 24 designs out of each of these but I actually want to support the designers and purchase some of their patterns privately. Okay so now another work in progress it was started on July the 7th. Sorry about the crinkles. I try to avoid that in my videos, but... Mm. So Caroline of Evertote chose this and worked with the artsy housewife, Gigi, to make a birthday box with lots of wonderful things in it. And she initially said she wanted to have this done by September. Well, in her last video, she said, I think I'm going to make it by the end of September. And I said, thank you, because I don't think I'm going to get this done for the beginning of September. But I did make good progress in that I finished the big flower and I finished the small flower and I got a start on the border. Now the border is where I'm thinking that I'm going to use some of my lovely floss gifts from my past students and change up the colors of the flowers and maybe put in some of Kim's favorite color, pink. But I want to actually do the whole picture and then floss toss to figure out what color I want the flowers and how many different colors will be logical without overwhelming what is mostly a neutral stitch. So I am on 16 count, I think this is buttermilk. Buttercream, that's what it is. And so everything is a Roxy Floss Co. fabric and floss. It's 100% Roxy. Now, just before I go on to more whips, you'll notice that I've got my Canada Swaps t-shirt on. I am happy to announce that I have had another photo arrive and she has popped her small into the, into the mail. So the postal service, if, um, if somebody hasn't arrived, received something yet, it will be quite soon. So I'm very excited to say that the stitching has been going well for so many of you and that some of them are near finished and fully finished. So. I suspect that I will get mine out in the next two weeks as well. And I guess it's a form of send a smile, but it's not what I was talking about having ready to go to the post office tomorrow. 
Now, when it comes to another work in progress, you all know that I have been working on the Canadian flag by um, Vivsters doing the Quaker flag 2024 Sal. And last time I had got a monumental four Quakers done in a two week period. This time did not get that much. Having said that, I thought I was only going to have half of a Quaker done. And then yesterday, I started on another gray Quaker and went, hang on. When I pinched the pattern, I discovered that I was at the edge of the maple leaf. So every time I needed a break, so every five papers, I get up and walk around and I do a bit of stitching. Uh, it, it's sort of like a palette cleanser so that I can look refreshed at the papers and so that my body doesn't complain about being bent over papers. So I now have, I think, 25 of my Quaker diamonds done. And you can see that right here is the edge of the maple leaf. Now, if you want to have other looks at this, Deanne, Stitching on the Rock, started on the right hand, the left hand corner, left hand top. So the opposite to mine, I started on the right hand top. And Darlene Dion started smack in the center. So that means that you can actually have a look at this project in three different ways with three different floss tubers. So I am truly excited about this. And I have to say, that I'm doing this on a 36 count opalescent linen. It's not ending up as big as I thought it was going to be. This is 29.9% done. So that means that this is a third. So I've got two more of this to go. So it'll be about out to here. So I'm, I'm really very, very happy with the size this is going to be because um, I would like to be able to, as I said to you, hang it in my window uh, for a little bit of time around Canada Day and then the rest of the time just inside. It's one I'm keeping. And I do also have the pattern. Uh, when I get this one done, I'm going to start the pride flag. And as always, my final work in progress, so this is definitely going to be a shorter video for me. Uh, my final work in progress is going to be my stained glass owl. Now, here's the thing. I like a reveal. That's a bit of a surprise. So I'm going to show you today where I am that is 85%. And then in the coming weeks when I show you, I'm just going to show you a close up of the area that I've been stitching so that in October when the full thing is done, it will have its reveal moment and it will be fresh instead of being seen every two weeks. So as usual, I've been spending time doing 100 to 150 of the confetti stitches and then going farther than that. So you can see that I've got most of the feathers in now and I've started on the stained glass. Now, I don't have all of the feathers in because if I bring this up close, you can see that there are still a few confetti spots for me to fill in. There's just a few at the edges. And even the edges of each of these stained glass are full of confetti. But there we go. That's what 85% done. So this is a Sharova Creations on Etsy. 
And this is part of the BAP to School Sal. And I know some people are, are looking ahead to starting a new BAP to School in September. I'm not going to start a new one in September uh, because I want to finish this and don't want to get distracted. Having said that, I have been looking at the Stitches So Beautiful patterns and I have several that are calling to me. And I noticed this morning when I took a peek while I was just trying to debate which one I really wanted, there's a sale. <laughs> so of course, after I do this video, I am going to go on to Stitches So Beautiful and make, I'll probably purchase two or three patterns and then determine from there which is going to be the one that I do. And I'm not going to tell you ahead of time. I'm going to surprise you after my owl is finished. Okay. This week, um, I finally was able to have Amazon send me my Pigeon Coop Design book. It was ironic that the people in the United States could get it quicker than the people in Canada, and the designer is Canadian. Amazon.ca was really messing with us quite a bit. And we would write to them saying, your website says we can have it to you in eight hours. Why don't I have mine? So I'm glad I've got mine and that it arrived between thunderstorms so it didn't get soaked because they didn't even knock anymore. They just put it on the front porch and drop. So I am excited and I am going to connect with Beth the Stad Steadfast Stitcher and we're going to pick one of these to do together. So I'm really excited because I've never done one with Beth, uh, but I know Laura Stitching by the Shore has done many projects with Beth and loved them. So I'm very happy to have that. When I was at my LNS shopping uh, for uh, fabrics for my daughter, my niece was with us and it had recently been her birthday, so I purchased her a few things. Um, I picked up a cross stitch gold magazine and Maria, uh, the owner of Stitch It Central said, oh, that's not a current guy. So you can just take that with you, Karen. Now, mind you, I had just spent like $400. So <laughs> the reason that I got this is this one right here. I want to do Sunflower September with Caroline of Caroline Stitch Corner in Austria. So she says, anything that's got a sunflower, big or small, stitch it with me. She loves sunflowers and decorated with them at her wedding. So I wanted to find a lovely sunflower pattern to do. Um, I did just notice a couple of other ones, but I think I'm gonna stick with this guy. And now I need to put on my glasses because there has been an awful lot of new to me floss tubes that have run by. And I actually now have a bit of a system that I am keeping dollar store recipe cards by my stitching chair. And when one comes up, I start by writing a, their name on the blank side and then I put a few notes on the other side so that I can actually tell you a little bit better about them rather than just saying, oh, I think it was like 10 days ago and I can't remember. So here we go. Arlene Wild stitching in the fence. She has such a bubbly personality. She's from the United Kingdom and has a marvelous accent. And the neat thing is that she's doing some patterns that I've never seen. I really love watching people from other countries that have access to 
other designers. And of course, she is willing to stitch a small, large, and everything in between. She's delightful. A Stitch in the Matrix. So this is Wendy, and she's got three videos. She just reached 500 subscribers. So she, she has a, a cute sense of humor. And uh, she had this area called Revenge Patterns, where she is showing patterns that are absolutely lovely, trying to get back at those people that enabled her to buy more stuff. So she's trying to make us buy some more stuff. And, and seriously, she's got lovely taste in her stitch patterns. I will be enabled. Chinook Crafter, the the is not part of her name. So this is Michelle and she is from Calgary. As soon as I saw the word Chinook, I knew that she was going to be Canadian because uh, that area is known for, to be honest, it's crazy weather. In the middle of winter, they can have snow one day and then the next day be above zero and have everything melting because they can get the warm winds coming from one direction and the cold winds from it. It's, yes, I've been there in June and needed to get winter clothing. So it's all over. So Michelle is the mom of toddlers. I actually don't know how she gets any stitching done. I couldn't do it when I had the toddlers, but she is. She's a process stitcher who loves the first 50% of her stitching and then somewhere between 50 and 60%, she gets a little bit of oh squirrel and starts something else. So she's trying to figure out how to actually continue on with things without affecting her enthusiasm. And she's the one that also, because she's in Canada, had problems trying to get her hands on the Pigeon Coop Designs book and had many conversations with Amazon, even got them to give her like a gift certificate of a percentage off of her next thing. So I was like, wow, I wish they'd done that for me. Cross Stitch Jess. Now she's interesting because she's an adult autistic who in her job needs to gain comfort giving presentations to people. So she thought, let's get comfortable talking by doing a floss tube. And I'm so glad she did. Now, first of all, I am very interested because I have an autistic child, but also she's a fantastic stitcher. Now she only has one video so far, but I know that she's going to have more. And this video is a whip parade of about 15 projects. She has started the Twisted Band Sampler and is embracing the one that has the specialty stitches. And she's going to do it in pastels. So she is like me that she does like to play around with coloring. I'm still going. And I actually didn't bring the entire pile because I thought you don't need 20 new. Yeah, there was that many new to me floss tubers in the last two weeks. Stitching by Immy. So her first stitch was You're My Lobster Kit. Um, for those of you who watched Friends back in the day, um, Rachel, You're My Lobster, what Phoebe was talking about her, and I can't remember the fellow's name now. Uh, she has a cute parade of completed kits. Uh, she happens to like kits, but is wanting to branch out into making up her own kits for patterns. She loves a bit of humor. Hmm. She stitched a project called Boobies, as in Boo Bees. So bumblebees dressed as ghosts. It was adorable. Penguin cross stitch. This is Chloe and she's another UK stitcher 
with an accent. She's already got 16 videos. I didn't know she was there until the cross stitch bunny um, shouted her out. Like me. So I like to stitch owls. Guess what she likes to stitch? She likes to stitch penguins. She does have a whip coat board and she's doing very well on the Deadly Aquarium Sal. And the last one for today is Sugar and Stitches. This is Natalie. Now, this is a rebranding for Natalie. She had a previous channel called Our Daily Stitches. And she decided that after having a bit of a break, she was going to start out fresh. And she wanted to start out so fresh that she did what she Marie Condoned Calm. She did a declutter and anything she wasn't going to love, she got rid of. She was ruthless. So she freshened up her craft area and video one is a whip parade of what she kept. So if you couldn't keep up with that, I will have them listed below. And I hope that um, you'll reach out to some of these floss tubers as they start their ventures. I have so thoroughly enjoyed my first year. Now, what is next? Well, the last time we were together was my uh, celebration-a-thon. And because it was my one year anniversary, I said that if you let me know where you liked to start on your cross stitch pot projects, that I would put your name into a draw for a $50 gift certificate from Evertote. So if we just take a peek at my findings now, obviously, not everybody chose to actually tell me, and I do know that it's because some of the other floss tubers um, want to make it possible for non-floss tubers to get the, uh, the prizes. Thank you to everybody for um, not mentioning the word prize. You, were, you, you all know the whole bit. So top left had a tie with it depends. If you said that more than one way of starting projects, I put you in the it depends. What I find is that for many of us that embrace a full coverage, we start in a very specific corner that is our liking there, but that if it's not full coverage, we often will start in the center. And I'm not alone on that. So there was an equal amount of people who change it around and start in the top left. Some people always start in the center. And then I had one start on the bottom and one start on the bottom right. Now with my random picker, who is getting the $50 gift certificate? Linda Pearson, 3340. Linda, I'm going to ask you to use the email that is in the description box below so that I can give you the code so that you can go shopping on the Evertote website. The $50 is in American funds because that's how Evertote runs their uh, company, even though they're here in Canada. It had something to do with the IRS and things like that. So, yeah. So congratulations to Linda and thank you to everybody for weighing in. Um, there was over 80 responses on that video and I do love answering the comments. I truly do. I really appreciate it that each of you take the time A to watch the video and B then to comment. And so many of you are uh, 
leaving me quite quite lovely and supportive uh, comments that um, I'm getting to know you personally. So that is absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. If we just take one more little peek at my book. So I am using My Crazy Life. Lori's stitching planner, cross stitch planner, to keep track of how I'm doing things this year. I wouldn't actually be able to do my floss tube without something to keep me on track. And one of the things that she has are pages for whips and new starts. Now it happens that I am trying to join Sally of Flossy Sews and Grows, and Sarah of Sew Me Sarah in their Fun 450 Sal. They are both turning 50 this year, and as such, they wanted to have 50 starts. So I said, I'm going to join in. Now, I am personally going to aim for more than 50 because my 50th birthday was over a decade ago. So I'm going for 60. And I'm thinking that maybe Darlene Dion is turning 50 this year. Caroline is turning 50 this year. There's a, that was a good year. Lots of stitchers were born that year. So in my list of starts, when I do my starts, if a project has multiple elements, for instance, when I'm doing things like my Jardin Privé Olympic Gnomes, I only count this once with regards to starts. Even though I get multiple finishes out of the pattern, I only count the pattern once. Otherwise, I would have been to like 25 on my one dozen Quakers by Rosewood Manor, because I'm doing the Sal with bake, the Bake Me a Quaker Sal with Shelia and EJ. And I have done like 25 ornaments and sent them out. Um, now, when it comes to my list, my Black Cat by Faith Works Designs was number 48. So I am only two away and within this when we get to the end of the year I will also report to you how many of the items are fully finished and how many pieces are carried forward because at the beginning of each month she has a spot here for me to list everything that I'm my top ones are what I'm carried forward from the previous month usually there's between 10 and 15 of those and then the bottom ones are what I have added in. And then you'll notice that I've got little short forms here so that I can actually put on my date which pieces that I was working on. So I am almost at 50. And I am also, each time I show pictures of these on Instagram, so I'll start showing more pictures of these again. Um, when they get fully finished, I do the Two Tall Stitchers FFO 2024, FFO Challenge 2024, that's what it is. So in 2023, they tried to get as many fully finished items as they could. And then the thought, uh, Jennifer is the one that did the finishing. Uh, she thought, well, let's just leave this as a continuous sal because it's really fun to see how everybody is finishing their items. So that is a really fun hashtag to look to see what's going on. Hashtags don't work quite the way they used to, but it is still fun. Just going to remind you, Canada Swaps is so much fun. 
I had a lovely Zoom with Michelle of Two Bay Stitchers, who is, who's doing this with me. And we were having the conversation about, okay, so going forward, what do we think? Because there were a few people that just couldn't quite do it this time, but they want to. Um, I think what we've decided is we're going to run a Canada Swaps two times a year, and we're going to try and do it outside of the high season of like getting ready for Christmas and getting ready uh, for Easter type things. So um, we will have further announcements about um, what a topic will be. This time our topic was just to stitch a Canadian designer. We will not hold you to that every time. Having said that, I do love celebrating Canadian designers. And now for my moment for music. My piece today is directly because one of my friends in Floss Tube, and let's see if I can find the book. There we go. Um, I do a Zoom with Amy. It's typically a twice a month. I, I would love to be able to do it every week, but life, each of us have um, parents that we have to take to uh, medical appointments and things, and she has children that are younger than mine, although I'm still taking them to dentists and one thing and another. So she mentioned that she really loved the piece called In the Garden. And so, let's see. In the Garden is by C. Austin Miles. And the rendition that I'm playing is arranged by Matt Heiser. For those of you that like to play piano, this particular series by Alfred is a wonderful series with so many different titles in it and levels of difficulty. And some of them are really big books that are come spiral bound as well. So this one is called Hymns for the Spirit. And so now you are going to hear In the Garden.
And there we go. Somehow, I have managed to make my video an hour anyway. <laughs> oh my. It seems to happen every time. I thank you. I thank you for coming to join me today. My time with you is very, very precious to me. I feel so blessed that each of you are in my life. And I hope that while you watch today, that you had needle, floss, and fabric in hand, and that as you made something beautiful, you made something happy. You made yourself happy. <sighs> That's the second time I've mucked up my closing comment. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I look forward to seeing you again in two weeks. Bye-bye.